everything inside me. The ancient Romans built roads across Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa, during which time they excavated enormous quantities of sedimentary rock. They also built extensive ramparts, stadiums, amphitheaters, aqueducts and other structures of considerable size, all of which involved extracting large amounts of soil and rubble from the earth. But never once did they record the discovery of a dinosaur fossil, or the preserved remains of an animal skeleton similar to a dinosaur or giant reptile. The Greeks, Persians, and Egyptians also built great cities and, in doing so, quarried millions of tons of sedimentary stone and displaced great quantities of subsoil. Yet, these advanced civilizations left no record of dinosaur finds. Both Aristotle and Pliny the Elder, men of great intellectual ability, made a detailed study of the natural world and were constantly inquiring after fresh information about foreign lands from travelers and explorers. Both took a great interest in unusual phenomena, botanical, zoological, geological, celestial, and so forth, that might shed further light on their scientific inquiries. Had any dinosaur skeletons been found anywhere in the known world at that time, these men would have been keenly interested in the details. But their extant writings make no reference to large animal fossils. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. In fact, until the mid-19th century, the possible existence at some time in history of giant dinosaur-like creatures, had not even been suggested. Myths and legends abounded, of course, but the exotic creatures depicted in these stories were, in general, exaggerated hybrids of existing fauna. From time to time, a new species was discovered, and stories about a fabulous new land would circulate, but in the entire literature of ancient civilizations, we find no consistent and discernible reference to creatures, natural creatures, whether living or fossilized, akin to what zoologists today call dinosaurs. Should we be surprised by this? For some reason, this is not a question that modern students of biology seem to ask. The separation of knowledge into discrete branches by our universities and colleges has led to a marked inability to frame and pursue questions of this kind. Please pay close attention to this image. One of thousands of open pit mines around the world. Dinosaur bones are never found in any of them. Think about it. Yes, we should be greatly surprised. The reason is very simple. If dinosaurs existed on the Earth for millions of years, then they should have left a record so extravagant and so extensive that it would be virtually impossible to excavate any part of the Earth and not find some evidence of their fossilized remains. The ancient Romans, Greeks, Persians, Egyptians, Babylonians, Assyrians, and Sumerians should have accumulated great quantities of largely intact dinosaur skeletons, and as they built the Great Wall in 200 BC, the Chinese should have unearthed tens of thousands of impressive femurs and jawbones, great domed skulls, and enormous fossilized rib cages. But they didn't. No one found anything. A million years is a very, very long time. Yet zoologists tell us that dinosaurs roamed the Earth for 165 million years. Just imagine for a moment the mountain of sturdy bones that such a staggering population would have produced. If only one animal in a million left a fossilized skeleton and the population density was a mere 10 individuals per square mile, then there should be several large, as yet undiscovered dinosaur fossils within a mile of your home, plus dozens of smaller specimens. Even though these assumptions are highly conservative, they point to the obvious fact that fossilized dinosaur remains should be extremely plentiful over most of the Earth. Why then are they only ever found by experts and only in remote locations? Why are there so few specimens in museums around the world? And why do so many of these feeble specimens consist of just a few bones? Despite the multiplicity of missing parts, entire animals, including their environment, are reconstructed from very little fossilized material. 
the artist has taken over from the scientist. Anything he chooses to sketch is accepted as reality, and absurd conclusions are drawn, literally, from non-existent evidence. In our earlier video on the great hoax known as evolution, we showed how bone fragments from pigs and primates were used to construct new species of hominid. In their determination to disprove the Bible and postulate a greatly inflated age for the Earth, these scientists were prepared to make the most outrageous claims based on nothing but their imagination, their unbounded arrogance, and their intense hatred of Christianity. In 1922, H.F. Osborne, a world-famous expert on fossils, declared, on the basis of the tooth shown on the left bottom corner, that a new species of hominid had been discovered, dubbed Nebraska Man. An artist's impression of what this man looked like was published widely in the press in both America and Europe. The fossil turned out to be the tooth of a peccary, a type of pig and an official retraction was published in 1927. Osborne also described and named the dinosaurs, known as Tyrannosaurus rex in 1905, and Velociraptor in 1924. The dinosaur hoax is part of the great evolution hoax. If evolution was to have any chance of winning popular acceptance, it would have to extend over a vast period of time. This in turn, required a bewildering array of new animal species to inhabit the Earth during this greatly extended time frame. A class of reptilian creature known as a dinosaur was postulated to provide these fictitious inhabitants. There was one major difficulty with this ingenious scam. If the world had been populated for 165 million years by a staggering variety of exotic reptilian creatures, then one would surely expect to find great numbers still in existence today. Since there are obviously no dinosaurs anywhere on Earth today, the Masonic tricksters behind this hoax needed a plausible way to explain their disappearance. Accordingly, it was claimed that the entire population of dinosaurs on Earth, thousands of millions of individuals, were suddenly wiped out in a major catastrophic event. The tricksters also took advantage of the need to postulate such an event to reinforce the false idea of outer space, another important element in the great end-time deception. They claimed that a huge asteroid collided with the Earth about 65 million years ago and caused such a sharp fall in atmospheric temperature that the unfortunate creatures, being cold-blooded animals, were unable to survive. Only very small, warm-blooded creatures, the early mammals, were able to endure the cold. Science Fiction A giant asteroid strikes the Earth, another fictitious detail in the Great Masonic Hoax, as I noted in earlier videos on this channel, the Babylonian elite who control this world like their lies to interconnect. Good lies should sound plausible, and really good lies should seem like scientific revelations, packed with explanatory power. Just look at the number and variety of lies that are exploited and reinforced in this fantastic scenario. An incredibly ancient Earth, spinning in space, is struck by a huge asteroid that kills off all the dinosaurs on the planet in a major extinction event. Fortunately enough, tiny mammalian creatures survive to evolve into the diversity of animal life forms, including man, that we see today. Let's laugh together. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job all is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video.